All right, today we're gonna play with AR Foundation in Unity. We're gonna make a starter project because I find myself doing basically the same three things every time I load up a new project in AR Foundation. I have to figure out how to get objects placed on the ground, I have to figure out how to not get click events to propagate through my UI, and I have to figure out how to toggle on and off AR planes and point clouds. So we're gonna do all that today and make a starter project that we're gonna build off of in future videos. A lot of people have been asking me about how to use the lightweight render pipeline in AR, more specifically the bloom effect, and also about loading asset bundles and stuff like that. So we will get there, but first we need a starter project to work from. So let's get started. Okay, so we got a new Unity project, and the first thing we need to do is get the relevant packages. So go to Window and Package Manager, and the first thing we need to do is install um, AR Foundation. So AR Foundation, install that. Okay, now we need the AR Core XR plugin, so install that as well. Now the last package we need is uh, AR Kit XR plugin, so install that. Okay, so now, just for future reference, if you build out and you get errors and they're not super obvious errors like a null reference exception or something like that it is very possible that you had the you have the wrong combination of uh, AR foundation AR kit and AR core and it could possibly be the unity editor so just keep in mind for this video I'm using unity 2019.1.2 f1 you can see that at the top and then if we go back to the package manager we're using AR core version 2.1.2 uh, AR kit version 2.1.2 and AR Foundation version 2.1.4. So if these are not available at the time you're following this along, if you wanna get these older versions, you can click this arrow and see all versions uh, to get older versions there. Okay, so now that we have all the packages that we need, uh, let's start uh, setting up our scene here. So delete the main camera and right click and add an XR session origin. This is what's gonna give us our AR camera. And then the other thing we need to add is XR AR session. And this is actually all that we would need to build a, su a successful scene. However, we do want to visualize everything. So um, right click and XR, create a default point cloud, and then do the same thing for a AR default plane. Now we need to add a couple components to our AR session origin. So click on that, and then over in the inspector, we're going to add an AR point cloud manager. We're also going to add an AR plane manager. And then we're also going to add an AR raycast manager. Now this concludes all of the components that we need, but let's set these up a little bit here. So the point cloud manager is looking for the default point cloud, uh, or you can actually just click on here and the AR plane manager is looking for an AR default plane. So we got everything set up there. Okay, so now we actually have to get our AR parent setup. So right click in the scene and let's create a 3D object, a plane, and make sure this is all zeroed out. This could potentially be used for like rendering AR shadows and stuff like that, but we're not going to do that today. So for now, let's remove the mesh collider and uh, let's just rename this um, content parent. And then under here, let's create a 3D object cube. This is what we're going to actually place. So effectively, anything you place under this content parent is going to show up in AR when you click the screen. So for this cube, let's um, let's actually change the scale to 0.2 because uh, in real world units, all ones is gonna be like one meter across. So we wanna make that a little bit smaller than that. So we'll make this 0.2 and then on the Y, let's move it up half of its scale because the um, origin is in the center. So that should sit on the ground nicely, um, but we don't wanna see this whole entire plane. So let's disable the mesh renderer. So that content parent is should be set up and ready to go. Uh, now let's create our toggle for um, toggling on and off the planes and the point cloud. So first of all, we're gonna create a UI canvas. This should give us our event system to handle the clicks and everything. So on this canvas, uh, make it screen space overlay. That's good. And then canvas scaler, we're gonna scale with screen size. And then under here, we're gonna create our UI toggle. So now this toggle, we're probably gonna wanna resize this thing, uh, make it a little bit bigger. So first of all, we'll set the anchor point to the top left and um, zero out the position. When we click on that, we see where that goes. We want it to be a little bit bigger. 
Well, let's first change the anchor to zero and one. That way, actually, when we zero these out, it's in a better position here. And we don't want the label. Let's delete the label. And then for this background, it's that's the background itself is anchored top left. We want to set that to stretch. And then make that all zeros. And now when we resize our toggle on the height and width, it'll give us something good. So let's change it to 100 by 100. And then kind of move this somewhere in the top left of the screen. And um, I think that scale looks good. Maybe we'll maybe we'll go 120. Sorry. Maybe we'll go 120 by 120. And then let's actually make the check mark scale with the box. So we'll set the check mark to stretch. Make this all zeros. And I think that looks that looks okay. Let's hit play and test our toggle, make sure it works. Okay. Okay, so everything is good here. So let's right click in the assets folder and create another folder and we're gonna call this scripts. Inside the scripts folder, we're gonna create two scripts. The first one is going to be called uh, place content. And then let's make another script and we're gonna call it, um, eh, let's call it toggle AR. All right, so let's first work on our place content script. So the first thing we're gonna need is public reference to our AR Raycast manager. So make sure you add the using directive for XR AR foundation. We also need a public reference to our graphic Raycaster that's on our overlay UI, which is called that Raycaster. And then inside an update function, let's first check for a uh, touch event or a click event. So input dot get mouse button down. And then we'll create a list of AR Raycast hits. We'll call that hit points. And then from there, we're gonna do Raycast manager dot Raycast and actually perform the Raycast with the mouse position. We're gonna use the hit points and then do trackable type dot planes. And then to get that to work, you're gonna to have to add the AR subsystem using directive. So then we can check if the hit point count is greater than zero. That way we know we actually got a hit. So we create a new pose from that first hit point. And then from that pose, we can just set this transform position and rotation to that of the pose. So that's gonna handle placing our entire content parent where it's supposed to go. Now, this works for placing the content, but we have to actually make sure we don't have a click over the UI. So create that function that returns a bool, and we're gonna use pointer event data here. I've tried this with um, is pointer over game object, and that did not work for me. This is the only way I could ever reliably get it to work. So create a new pointer event data, pass in event system dot current, make sure you add the right using directive, and set the position to input mouse position. Oh, uh, something is wrong here. Well, whatever. Uh, go list raycast results, and we'll just call that results. And then, oh, delete that semicolon after mouse position. And then lowercase c in raycast results. So we'll create a new list of raycast results, and then from our overlays raycaster, perform a raycast with the data uh, and those results, and then we want to return results count is greater than zero. So that way we can do that check up top for if the click is not over the UI, then we can continue. So inside our toggle AR script, the first thing we need is a public reference to our AR plane manager. Just call that AR plane manager and then oh, add the using directive for AR foundation. And then we're gonna do the same thing, make a public reference for our AR point cloud manager, just call that point cloud manager. And then we need to make a function for visualizing the planes, first of all. Uh, that function is gonna take a bool, which is our desired active state. And then from here, the first thing we need to do is point cloud manager, or sorry, plane manager dot enabled equals active. This is gonna handle, in the case that it's false, that handles making sure any future planes aren't created. And then loop through each current AR plane in plane manager dot trackables and uh, set that game object to our desired active state. Now that handles the planes, so let's duplicate that and we're gonna basically do the same exact thing for the point clouds. Um, just make sure to change all the relevant stuff there. So now that we have functions to, to do what we wanna do, we need to actually call those functions somewhere. 
So our toggle is going to handle calling these functions. So now let's make a public void um, on value changed function that's going to take a bool, which is the toggle's active state. So from there, we can call visualize planes and we can call visualize points. And that should be all that we need to do there. Let's just delete the using directives and uh, it's looking pretty good. Okay, so we got all our scripts done. Now we just need to hook them up to everything. So the content parent is going to take our place content script. It needs the Raycast manager from our session origin, and then it needs the Raycaster from the canvas that our UI elements are gonna be on. Now, the other thing we need to do is hook up our AR toggle. So on this toggle, let's go uh, AR toggle, or sorry, toggle AR. And then this needs our plane manager and our point cloud manager which are on our AR session origin again, and then we need to hook up its on value change function that we created in our toggle script. So we want to toggle AR, and then it's a dynamic bool because it takes the value of the um, toggle when it changes. So let's give it our on value change function. And now we should be good. Let's just hit play in the editor and see if our toggle is working actually. Okay, toggle works, cool. So now all we really need to do is get our build settings in order and put this on our device. So file build settings. First, switch this to Android or iOS, whatever you prefer. I'm gonna switch to Android for now. And then we need to add open scenes, add our main scene into our build, and let's go to player settings. So first of all, we need to get a good bundle identifier. So I am going to go com dot Matthew dot, I don't know, test AR2. And I'm gonna copy that from Android into iOS as well. So while we're here, let's get our iOS build settings in order. So the first thing you need to do is require AR kit, wherever that is, yes, requires AR kit support, check that. Um, that's gonna add in automatically a camera usage description. So we wanna change the target min version for AR kit is iOS 11. So we'll do that and then down in architecture, universal, change this to ARM64. Now you should be good to just build out and run. Everything should work on iOS. So for Android, let's go over here. Let's remove Vulkan from the uh, graphics APIs. And then there's one other thing. Oh yeah, uncheck multi-threaded rendering. Oh, so I tried to build and I forgot one thing. We need at least Android uh, level 24, uh, min level 24. All right, so now let's build and run, and yes, everything seems to be working. Okay, so I loaded everything up, and everything seems to be working nicely. We can place this little cube wherever we want. Looks like it's on the ground, and we can toggle our AR stuff on and off. All right, so that's it. That's all I got for today. Hopefully this video helped you out, but now we at least have a good AR foundation starting point that we can build off of in future videos. So. Uh, subscribe to this channel. Look out for our upcoming videos. We're going to try to do videos like every Tuesday. The next one is probably going to be from Luke. So make sure you tell him that he's a bum and leave all kind of hateful comments. But uh, that's it for now. So again, let me know in the comments uh, what you guys want to see in the next ones. Goodbye.